Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Press Play Lifestyle Inspired Podcast, where we do interviews with interesting and inspiring people like our new friend, Ilani. And we do this for our listeners, that's you, to help them find the resources, tools, and support that they need to be their best inspired self. So how are you doing today, ma'am? I am so grateful to be here. Thank you so much for inviting me. And oh, thank you. You're so sweet. Truly grateful day. In fact, the first thing I do when I get up is I start to write in a gratitude journal. Oh, that's a wonderful way to start your day. Got to start with that mindset. You know, is every day good? No, but is there good in every day? Yes. Oh, I love that. That's a great perspective. Um, I wake up every day and wiggle my body because mm. I'm so tired. Like I, I really struggle with um, sleep. Uh, I have a, 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 a narcolepsy, so I have a sleeping disorder. So when I get up in the morning, I literally move every like piece of my body, like one finger, one toe, because movement begets movement. Um, so yes. that's how I start. It's a little less, it's like similar. Like I'm grateful that I can wake up. I'm grateful yes. that I can move. I'm grateful that my you know, knees haven't given out yet or my back or <laughs> yeah. so kind of a similar thing. Um, so that was an interesting way to start. So uh, Lonnie, I wonder if you would be willing to introduce yourself to the audience and just tell them a little bit about you and maybe your beautiful name, because uh, you say it so much better than I do. <laughs> and I do get called a lot of things, you know, when you have an ethnic name. My name is Eleni, and it's Greek for Helen. I am 100% Greek, and I was named after my maternal grandmother. So I, I, I do, I, I love having the ethnic name, knowing where I came from. And I am so blessed and so excited because I get to work with entrepreneurs and C-suite executives that are, and I say this with all due respect, out of whack. You know, if you're out of alignment, you know, think about it. If you're in a car and even one wheel's out of alignment, how much farther down the road do you think you're going to get? Yeah, that's a good, an interesting analogy. Yeah, um, so issues. when you kind of say they're out of whack, I'm curious, um, yes, I'm, I have daily out of whackness, but is there a specific area that you have seen in your career where people mm -hmm. have um, more out of whackness than others? Like that's kind of yes. an area where you either focus or you see often as a, yes. a struggle point. Yes, yeah, so that's a great question. And probably the biggest common struggle I see is money. People's relationship with money. And it doesn't matter if you wanna make 50,000 a year or 50 million, I'm talking about your relationship with money. And if you have a contentious relationship with it, or you feel like it's just this necessary evil I have to have, you're never going to be in the driver's seat. And I'm on a mission to help people feel in control where money is concerned, not the money controlling them. Yeah. I, and I've heard this a lot too, like in our circles, like you and I have similar um, people that we are around that we know. And I hear a lot about like, I'm, I'm air quoting for anyone that's not seeing the video, like money mindset. Um, but then I, I also hear a lot of backlash. Like, well, it's really hard to have a positive money mindset without have any money. Um, right. How do you combat sort of that frustration with like, how do I come from, a, from abundance when I'm feeling lack, right? When I am eating 100%. ramen. <laughs> like, what My is first... Mean? And I totally relate to that. I, mean, I remember specifically when I was down to three cans of beans and $11 and my car had broken down that day. Luckily, I made it to the gas station, just left it. They called me and said, oh, it's going to be about seven, 800 in repairs. And I said, go ahead and fix it. Now, again, three cans of beans and $11. <laughs> I should, but I do believe in abundance. I love that you brought that up. And to me, it's all abundance but you either have an abundance of lack or you have an abundance of prosperity. So which direction do you want to lean in? And in that situation, I remember I had already started my business, but I had hit a rough patch, but I kept going. I know it's out there. I'm living in an abundant universe. I know that I can do this. I know that my intentions are honorable. I'm more than motivated to help people live their best lives and learn how to charge with their worth. And I went from $11 to over 22000 in one week. So we're going to work together after this show. I'm just, <laughs> yeah, I think that's it. I think, um, 
was it Wayne, Dwayne Johnson actually had a similar, he didn't do that well, but when he was, is literally his origin story. It was either mm-hmm. like three, seven or $11 um, that he had left in his pocket. And he was like, yeah, no more. I'm not living this life this way. No. Um, no. And I, I think that it's, I, we grew up um, very, very poor. Um, my mom, we lived in a car for, for quite a while in, in Michigan, which I know you're familiar with in Lansing. So, you know, where it's nice and warm in the winter. Um, and I think I, like, as a young person, I was like, I'm never going to live this life, right? I'm, I'm not, there's too many ways to, to make money. There's too many ways to, um, find food that I'm not going to, you know, eat peanut butter every four days. But that's a huge, I think of like people's past lack is, can be such a baggage that they carry with them into their entrepreneurial journey. Uh, Do you have any tips for people who are just kind of stuck in the old patterns? I I don't even know if that's the right way to say that. No, well, we all grow up with a money story and I appreciate you saying it's about carrying it with you. You know, we grow up. I mean, not, you know, everyone, you know, what you heard your parents say, like money's evil, money's the bad guy. There's never enough to go around. Money so doesn't grow on trees. That was the one that our family was yes, like, you yes. know, money doesn't grow on trees. Why are you wasting those three corn kernels that fell on the floor? And I'm like, really? Right? <laughs> but it's giving all our power to money when in reality, you know, money's neutral, money's energy. And like anything in our world, we get to apply the meaning to it. So if money's the bad guy, money's evil, then you're always going to have a contentious relationship with it. And I, I remember the day that I walked home from the mechanic and I was kind of dancing around my, my apartment. And I said, I, I know I've already been connecting with people. I know the money exists. I know it's out there. It's going to come, come to me. And I kept my head focused on going forward. But what I see a lot with clients is they're, they're not even aware of the money story that they grew up with. So it's not, and, and I know that parents or other adults that may have been strong influences in your life had the best of intentions because that story was passed down to them. Yeah, yeah. It's the awareness that is key. I, I had a client who, an incredibly talented, creative, soulful entrepreneur, but barely making ends meet. I mean, was just living month to month and a lot of months she didn't know if she was going to make a car payment. And we started talking, we started working together. She realized that she was still carrying on that legacy where her mom would be like, oh my God, we're not going to make it. We don't have enough. How are we going to get this money? You know, it was all the anxiety and negative emotions. So when it came time for her to discuss her fees with clients, she almost apologized. Like, I- I'm sorry, is this amount okay? So she was never gonna earn what she was worth. And through our work together, she realized, oh my God, I'm still living in that money's the bad guy. There's not enough to go around. And I don't feel I have the right to even talk about it. The awareness made the biggest difference. And of course, you know, we had some specific action steps and strategies but she totally turned it around and started making six times what she was used to for the past two years. Yeah, that's beautiful. I, I think that um, one thing I would guess, and I'd, I'd invite you to correct me if, if I'm guessing wrong, but um, you know, I'm in my 40s, so I've spent 40 years saying money doesn't grow on trees, right? Um, 40 years times 365 days times whatever, right? So I've had this this echo in my head that said, you know, there's not enough, there's not enough, there's not enough, this is going to happen. I have to imagine then it's not just like a one day, oh, yeah, no. money's abundance where you go, oh, you're right, money does grow on trees. So is there something to be said for it being somewhat of a process to unravel these old oh, shadows I, or whatever we call them in our mind? 100% agree with you, 100%. And as I know that you know through your coaching work, awareness is key. And it's like any relationship. You have a relationship with money and all those things that we grew up with, that we learn, the limiting mindsets, the scarcity mindset, 
it's as if we signed up for a, a contract, you know, that we committed to, and it may have served us well at one point, but you have to question if it's serving you as an adult. So yes, it's definitely a process, but I believe anyone at any point in their life can rewrite their money story, but it's taking the daily action. It's kind of like if you say, hey, I, I, I decided I'm gonna get in shape and I go to the gym one day. No, <laughs> you have to keep going. It's a process, but That's I think- That's why we only do the video from like the head up. Cause I made, like I went like three months ago when, <laughs> before all this started. Exactly. Oh. Definitely, no, definitely a, a process, but the, like any relationship, you know, you cultivate it. Yeah. And I've asked clients, I said, you know, if you want a rich and rewarding relationship with your spouse, with your kids, with your clients, don't you have to pay attention to them on a regular basis? Mm -hmm. So how can you expect to have a rich and rewarding relationship with money if you're too afraid to pay attention to it on a regular basis? Yeah, that's, that's interesting. Cause one of the questions I was going to ask, because I've, again, I've heard it, but I'm not sure I really understood what people mean by it is that idea of a relationship with money, mm -hmm. um, having a relationship with sort of an inanimate object. Isn't really something that I, that I've kind of processed before. Um, can you maybe make some attempt to explain what you mean by that? Well, I, I have learned uh, from, through my own <laughs> hard knocks and through my mentors that how you do money is how you do everything. And I've heard people say how you do anything is how you do everything. Yeah. And I do agree with that. When I think of, for example, the entrepreneur, the client that I mentioned, she was so afraid to discuss her fees, you know, to stand up for herself in that business setting. But that also bled over into her personal life. She tolerated negative relationships. She tolerated not feeling valued. You know, she tolerated things that did not make her feel whole. And once we, and again, it is a process. And once she learned to stand up for herself where money was concerned and confidently state her fees. So she knew, yes, I'm charging what I'm worth. I know I'm giving great value. That also translated into other areas of her life. She ended up meeting the love of her life because she oh, took a stand for what she wanted and wasn't afraid to say it. Yeah, I think that's a, a great like point in there that I heard buried in there a bit, which is I've found that a lot of the women that I've met or interacted with through my life, they're not actually comfortable saying what they want. Like we've always right. been told, you know, ladies don't talk about those things um mm -hmm. and so why wouldn't money be that as well right like why wouldn't you don't ask for the lobster because that means you're gonna have to pay for the lobster right my i don't know if anyone gets that reference but my mom used to always tell me that when i was a kid or you know no one's gonna buy the cow if they get the milk free <laughs> and i'm like wow Am I a cow? Like, I don't know. Like all these like negative references, even in to wanting to being a yes. female that had a want or a desire. Um, and it sounds like if how you do one thing is how you do everything, right? It sounds like money sort of fits into that as well is we don't talk about the want or the desire to have it, even an embarrassment, right? I, Christian faith, you grow up tithing. We grow up being humble. We grow up yes. with all these yeah. things. Um, it's pretty, it sounds like it's pretty deep seated. Like I can see we're it having is. a coach that keeps reminding you of your worth almost. You, you almost have to start at like this really deep level. And, and it isn't about the money per se. Cause I had somebody comment during an, another show that said, I'm not about the money. I just want to live my life the way I want to live it. I don't need to make millions. I said, that's great. I'm not telling anybody they need to make six or seven figures. My point is, I want you to ask yourself and be honest, is the money controlling you or are you controlling it? How many decisions are you making based on what you have or don't have in the bank? Yeah, yeah. Or do you even know what's in the bank? Right, I had this like really weird epiphany 
and it was an article on money and that introverts and money, which was an interesting kind of combo. Mm -hmm. And they said, um, one of the things, you know, if you're having a money mindset struggle and you're an introvert, you probably haven't done your taxes on time or in a long time. Oh. And I was like, so then I had to think about that. And I was like, hmm. you know, is, but it's the avoidance of yes. seeing how much you had or have, right. And then how much you're going to have to give to the government. And there's this whole like dread. And so I did one of my taxes. I'm behind on one, but I did one of my business taxes after reading the article. And I was like, super embarrassed because it literally took like an hour. I've been putting it off for like, well, you mm -hmm. know, it's June. So, <laughs> so maybe like, I don't know, six months and it took an hour, like all the stress. If you add all the six months of stress yes. for what, because I didn't want to, I don't even know what I didn't want to see. Right. Did I didn't want to see what I didn't have or what I did have. So then there's something to be said for that relationship that you do or don't have. Yes. yes. And there, there's so much guilt and shame connected to it. And we all have a, a financial set point, if you will, like that amount of money you need each month to cover your bills. And I don't mean pay them off. Like, you know, what do I need just to keep the lights on and keep going? Yeah. And when I meet people that start to like climb forward, start to raise that point, if they don't have their head wrapped around right where money is concerned, Something, there's going to be a roadblock. There's going to be an obstacle. That's life. But if you aren't conscious and being proactive, then that's going to set you right back down. It's going to drop you right yeah. back down. Yeah. And you're going to take yourself out of the game. Wasn't well, that like the stories that you hear about like lottery winners, right? Like yes. people who had nothing and they think that they'll be happy when like once they, they win the lottery, then they do. And they're like back to having nothing in two years a year is, right. is that maybe related to this kind of idea that their set point was so low that they kind of i don't know what happens then right well and it's back to giving all the power to money like i don't want people to define themselves but is money the most important thing in the world no your health is love is without question but not owning the reality or accepting the reality that money's going to be a part of your existence for the rest of your life. You know, keeping the lights on, buying that food, being able to help others, being able to take care of your family. And again, you want to make 50,000 and that's great. Again, I just want people to be in the driver's seat. I want you to decide there's no guilt or shame unless you're putting it on yourself because other yeah, people what are stories are you telling yourself right nobody knows it's in anyone's bank account isn't that funny like, no we take all this like oh my gosh people what well, nobody knows what's in your is or isn't in your bank account that's why the like lamborghini coaches right they're out there like instagram model whatever and they don't have it either right you don't no. actually know what's what's in their what's in their bank account or in their wallet right so it's, it's just, inter it's interesting. So what would you, is there any kind of, you said awareness was a great place to start. If you had to give an exercise to the audience, like it's like only one thing that they could begin to sort of take this road toward having a stronger relationship with money. Do you have something you might suggest for them? Yeah, a, a couple simple things that are, that are connected. I have my clients use a money tracking sheet where they literally write down every day how much money comes in from any source. It could be you found the coin on the ground, you know, commission, birthday money, found money, whatever it is. But it's vital that it's even on days that are zero. Write that down. And I had a client like, I'm not putting the damn zero down. I'm not doing it. Then money is still controlling you. You're not controlling money. So instead of looking like, oh shit, I got another zero, you know, you can turn it around at the end of the month, however many zeros there may have been, you can say, okay, next month, I'm only going to allow X number of days for zeros. And then your mind, you know, you're training your mind to start looking for those opportunities. Oh yeah. That's, I love that. It's, it's, it's interesting. That's a similar exercise that we do in some of my work, which is you kind of set your subconscious on a quest to 
yes. change it without you going, how am I going to make this money? You just say, all right, Jackie. All right. Right. I'm going to find a way to have one less zero. And then your brain starts doing work to find the answer, right? Without, Cause it's specific, right? It's very specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, all of those things. Your subconscious is like, Hmm, let us look and see what can we find. Yeah. So I, I remember love that. the um, rich dad, poor dad, you know, I read that book decades ago and I'll never forget the chapter where the, the young boy comes home and he's all excited and he's talking to his poor dad, just biological dad. And there was this great new bike he wanted. I really wanted this new bike. And first thing out of the dad's mouth was, you can't afford it. Well, then later he's at rich dad's house and rich dad said, how can you afford it? Hmm. So just to remember that, that shift, because you're, if I was at a conference um, last year and the facilitator had said, how hard can it be? And I'm sitting in the audience and everyone's going, oh yeah, that's a good question. I said, no, it's not. Because if you ask me how hard it can be, my mind will give you a thousand ways of how hard, hard it can right. be. Right. How easy could it be? Exactly. Ah. Exactly. Let your mind look in the right direction. That's just interesting. So I think it's a lot about, so we grew up hearing things said in a certain way. And so those are our patterns, right? Those are the ways, but everything we say to ourselves starts our brain working on solving those problems. Yes. And so maybe it's something, some of it's just about retraining yourself to ask different questions so yes. that you can find different answers, right? The answers we have now may not serve us. So what would serve you? What would be a better relationship with money? What would be a better conversation? Yeah. I love that. I might have future to Future focused. It. You know, I like make decisions from where you want to be. If you want to be a six figure business owner, if you want to be a seven figure business owner, you have to adopt that mindset. And what would in that situation, whatever it is, that six or seven figure business owner do? Yeah, they would make the call. Just saying. <laughs> yes. They yes. would pick up the phone and make the call, even though you don't yes. want to. Absolutely. Oh, well, thank you so much. I think we've, I got some nuggets. I might have to start keeping a money sheet. I don't know. My husband will, will be happy. I will send you an electronic version. Oh, thank you. Use. My husband is a, a CFO, or was until he decided his entrepreneurial journey, you know, because we decided we should both do that at once. No midlife crisis here. Um, so it's, it's definitely because there was so much change, right? then um he's got a financial background so he's like obsessed and i'm like eh, eh, you know like and it's not really meshing so maybe we can find a middle he'll be happy to know what i'm looking at all so there we go that's great <laughs> yeah so thank you so much for taking the time to to share with us about um some of your stories and how you're helping people and your clients with their relationship with money if people are really interested in like this topic and making more money in their business or having a better relationship, where can they find you? You know, where can they find out more information about you? And it will yeah. be in the show notes too. So in case anyone's Great. not fast enough to write it down. Great. <laughs> well, my full name is Eleni Anastos and I'm just at Eleni And I'm also on LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. So you can, find me in any one of those, but it's just under my name, Eleni Anastas. Anywhere you want to be, right? It's a, we're all over the place. Well, thank you so much for just taking time out of your day to speak to my audience and help them. You're our very first like person that's really focused on a money mindset. So I'm sure it'll great. be a great value to the audience. Certainly was to me. So thank, thank you so you. much. And I look forward to staying in touch. Uh, yes. Any last words for the audience that you'd like to share? It doesn't matter where you're at in your life, at what point, it doesn't matter what age, it doesn't matter if you don't have a dime to your name, you can turn it around. One of my favorite sayings is, small hinges swing big doors. One little change is gonna dramatically shift the trajectory going forward. Wonderful, well, thank you so much for spending time with us today, and I look forward to staying in touch. See you later, bye-bye. Thank you, bye.